never happened before. We never had long-lived people before. We never had 60-year-old newlyweds before. We never had 90-year-old marathon runners before. We never had 65-year-old rock and roll stars before. <laughs> and I would even say, at the risk of being a bit extreme, that this longevity revolution may at the end of the day have a greater impact on who we think we are, what we do in our lives, the global economy, politics, than either the industrial or technological revolutions of previous centuries. Two thirds of all the people who have ever lived past 65 in the entire history of the world are alive today. I'll say that again. Two thirds of all the people who have ever lived past 65 in the entire history of the world are alive today. Let me put this in context. If you look at this chart, it's a chart of the average life expectancy at birth over the past 1,000 years. And what I'm often struck by is the fact that on the first day of the 20th century, the average life expectation was only 47. By the end of the century, it had vaulted up to 78. And that's a bigger breakthrough in that one century than in the previous 900 years combined. And the point of it is actually simple, but perhaps profound. And that is that throughout all history, most people didn't age, they died. So in the 1850s, couples like you, or people like you, didn't say, gee, honey, what would you like to do after retirement? Because you'd be dead. Our medical system didn't need to be expert at things like hypercholesterolemia, osteoarthritis, adult onset diabetes, because most people died young of acute infectious diseases before they had got old enough to have their bodies wear out. And most people didn't think about, what could I be after 50? What could I do when I'm 70? What will be my shiny accomplishment when I'm 100? To put this in even more dramatic perspective, I'm going to click this little device in my hand and show you the average life expectancy at birth, not over the past 1,000 years, but over the past 100,000 years. Medical anthropologists now tell us that throughout 99% of human history, the average life expectancy worldwide was less than 18. And so this has never happened before. the new power consumer. For me, it's sometimes how you cut the gem that makes it special. So rather than cutting the gem by the usual demographic segments, I decided to try to find a way to cut it that would be most valuable to an organization like yours. If you look at where the income is, it's not among young people. It's among people in their 40s and 50s. If you look at discretionary income, it even soars higher. Take a look at the average household expenditures. And by the way, if you came from another planet, and had no bias towards a particular market group or segment, and you saw this statistic, you'd probably say 40 to 60 year olds are perhaps a very interesting group to target. Look at the purchase of automobiles, vacations, airline fares, movie and theater tickets, DVD players, computer hardware, computer software, cellular phone service, grocery store purchases, cereals and bakery products, beer and wine, food away from home, clothing. By the way, I want to make a point about this too. I think a disservice is being done to the media industries that you've got people sculpting and segmenting the population who aren't really tracking what's going on in the population. You've now got a boomer generation between 42 and 60 with the greatest concentration of wealth and are spending it, and yet they're not lined up as an attractive demographic. And it stands to reason that the anchor, the linchpin perhaps, that holds so much of our youth-oriented media together is the belief that as people are entering into their teens and early 20s, they're forming their perspective as to who they are and how they'll dress and what they'll wear and what they'll buy and what cars they'll drive. And, and then they stay with those for a lifetime because people don't do a lot of changing and reinventing. But in a world where people are continually open to what's next and trying new things becomes the mantra. And people are hopeful about the years ahead in their own personal lives. Brand loyalty 
starts to disappear. First, I'll remind you of the Greek myth of Tithonius, the beautiful goddess who could live forever, but fell in love with a mortal warrior. Uh, excuse me, her name was Eos. She fell in love with Tithonius, the mortal warrior. And because she wanted to be with him for all time, she asked Zeus to grant him immortality. And Zeus says, done. And then as she was leaving Zeus's chamber, she realized she forgot to ask for health. And as the fable goes, this once pride, proud, powerful, healthy warrior got older and sicker, and his bones broke, and his organs rotted, and his brain became demented, but he could never die. I think that's what we've done so far. I do not believe we've created the right version of aging. And, and frankly, I do not feel that we have a quality health care system for an aging population. And I think it's wrong in almost every conceivable way. So some of the things that I feel need to happen. First of all, we have no purpose to our health care system. All the talk has been about financing health care. Fabulous. But if your train is heading in the wrong direction and your goal is to simply pour, put more coal in the engine, if it's heading in the wrong direction, it's still not going to get anywhere. We need to have healthy aging be the focus of our health care system. In an increasingly longevous era, to have tens of millions of people living long lives with suffering and pain and sickness and disability and horrendous impact on families and on the economy is simply wrong. And the one thing I'll say to you before I finish here is that I would say the one great thing about the future is that it hasn't happened yet. And so the question is, will you simply be a bystander and watch the enormous financial opportunities emerge, or will you be a part of planting and harvest them? Will you stay by the sidelines and watch a whole new set of possibilities emerge for 40 and 60 and 80 year olds, or will you tell the story, maybe even help midwife the revolution? <laughs>